Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the front and back panels of the Beacon Bomber crochet pattern. The Beacon Bomber is featured this month as a fun make-along along with its sister design, the Blake Bomber knitting pattern, which you can find all the details for in the description below. The make-along is starting today and runs through February 20th. It is not too late to join. If you wanna get started, you can go ahead and check everything out in the description below. The Beacon Bomber uses Lion Brand's Let's Get Cozy Chenille Peel Yarn, which is super soft, ultra cozy, and fuzzy, perfect for those cold winter days. And it's paired with their Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling Yarn, which is a great um, basic worsted yarn that is going to stand up over time, making this the perfect combo for your new winter bomber jacket. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so along with the yarns that you will need for your Beacon Bomber, um, you will also need a four millimeter crochet hook and a five millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors. And one thing that I do recommend, especially when we start working with the chenille appeal yarn, is to get yourself one of these little row counters. I got these ones from Amazon and I will put the link to them in the description below along with all the other supplies that I'll be using in this video. This will just help you keep track since this yarn gets kind of fuzzy, it can be hard to count your rows as you go. So let's go ahead and get started with, I'm gonna show you just a little swatch, but the front and back panels are made exactly the same. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because we don't need to see all those stitches, so I'll make a little swatch, but you'll get the basic construction of how these pieces are made. Okay, so we're going to start the back panel, which is our week one of our make along, and the front panels are week two. But since they're both made the same way and they have like basically the same shape, it's just going to be long rectangles, I'm just going to show you a tiny little swatch today and that will make sure that you are making them correctly and help with any tricky bits along the way. So we're gonna start with our basic stitch anti-pilling and our four millimeter crochet hook. We wanna put a slip knot on our hook and for all sizes and both for the back and front panel, we are going to chain 12. Then in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across, we will single crochet. Okay, so there's our last stitch of row one. Again, row one is just single crocheting in the second chain from the hook and each chain across. We will chain one and turn and now we are going to be single crocheting in the back loop only of each stitch across. And this will become the bottom ribbing, the band that goes all the way around. So it'll run the whole bottom um, width of your back panels and front panels. So there we are at the end of row two. And now you will need to pay attention to the written pattern, which you can find for free on my blog, or you can grab the PDF in my shop. Um, and we're going to chain one and turn, and we're just going to be repeating row two for the total number of rows indicated for your size. So I'm just going to make a small little swatch. I might do maybe 12 rows of the ribbing for my swatch just to show you what that will look like but go ahead and follow along for your size that you are making and you're going to make those number of rows 
and that will end up being the bottom section of your cardigan pieces. So I will meet you back here when we are ready to start the main body section of our panels. Okay, so I've worked about 12 rows here of ribbing. Get my last stitch in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work 90 degrees and we're gonna be working with the chenille peel along the edges here. So our bottom sections of our back and front panels are this ribbing here with the basic stitch anti-pilling. And then we move on to the main body section for the rest of the panel using the chenille peel and working into these edges here for that first row. So what I like to do is let me get my chenille peel yarn and pull a chunk out here. Oh, my skein is giving me some yarn barf, but that's okay. All right. So here I've worked my last stitch here. I need to chain one, but I'm going to switch to the chenille peel here. So kind of like making a chain with the new yarn, and then I'm going to pull the basic stitch anti-pilling tight so that kind of gets pulled into this last stitch. And now I can make my chain one with just the chenille and peel. And we're just going to be working one extended single crochet stitch into the end of every single row along our ribbing. Okay, so into this first one, an extended single crochet is a lot like the single crochet. We're going to insert a hook and drop a loop then we're gonna yarn over and pull through just that first loop and then yarn over and pull through both. So there's our first stitch made and then working into the next row, we'll work another extended single crochet and we just repeat that all the way across making sure to put one stitch into each edge of each row of our ribbing. Okay, so now we can fasten off or cut off our anti-pilling, leaving a little bit of a tail so that we can weave in those ends. If you want, you can leave a slightly longer tail um, for when you're seaming this section of um, your cardigan pieces together. Okay, so now the rest of our rows are gonna be a repeat of this row, row two. We're gonna chain one, and we're gonna work an extended single crochet into each stitch all the way across. And since this yarn is fuzzy, it can be sometimes hard to see where your stitches are. It can help if you have um, a little light that you could put underneath your work, then it can help see, you can help see the stitches um, if you hold them up to a window or something like that, you can kind of see or you can feel um, like here's my next stitch that I need to work into. Kind of pulling the stitches apart and looking for that natural space that you would insert your hook into. But again, this is why using a row counter is a good idea, just because it's so fuzzy that you can't always count your rows very easily. You won't be able to see them as well as with the basic stitch anti-pilling yarn. Okay, 
So that's the end of row two. Um, so the number of rows you did for your ribbing will be the number of stitches you should have across the main body of your panel. And you're just going to repeat row two for the total number of rows that you, that your size requires. So since I've done two rows here, I can use my little row counter and move it to number two. And after every row, I can change my row counter so I know where I am and how many rows I've done. Um, so that is how you will construct your back panel and your two front panels. So this week we're working on our back panel and next week we'll work on our two front panels, but they're both made exactly the same. Again, you can follow the written instructions on my blog or get the PDF in my shop. Or if you want to, you can get the yarn and the PDF for free with your yarn if you get the kit through Lion Brand.